training facility is going to offer an opportunity for players, young and old, to experience off-season training like they've never experienced before. For the past week and a half, the Vikings have called Blakesley Stadium home, but as of September 13th, becomes the home of the Mavericks once again. The Mavericks were preseason picked to finish seventh in the WCHA this season, and they say they're better than that. They can't wait to show the opposing coaches who picked them that low they deserve more respect. And while the All-Star Game is a great honor, it's also a good chance for the Moondogs to show off for some MLB scouts. Take me out to the ball game. Outdoor baseball returns to Minnesota today, and fans and former Twins alike were excited about the start of the Target Field era here in Minneapolis. Trailing heavily in the second half against conference rival Loyola this past fall, Matt Collins led his team from defeat to a victory, clinched on a field goal with just seconds remaining. He is a comeback kid who helped the Wildcats within a play of the state tournament. And now his comeback is not a game, it's his life. In February I was diagnosed with leukemia. Um, been staying down at the Mayo Hospital or Methodist Hospital in Rochester since then. Um, treating it, getting chemo every week or every day, and um, lived in Rochester since then, so for the past six months. Collins' motto is fight forever, and it exemplifies his character. He's a great, he's a great guy, you know, cool kid to talk to, one of my good friends, you know, hell of an athlete, he's a, he's a nice kid in general. Hardworking, uh, he never gives up, and he just fights what he wants, and he's a good guy. We're just made armbands, t-shirts, just anything to help raise money for the family. All those who support him want to help out in any way they can. And just a few hundred feet from where he used to battle on the baseball diamond in the football field, Matt Collins now walks in the relay for life to battle cancer for himself and for many others like him. Since my cousin was diagnosed with cancer about 10 years ago, our family has been coming here and now is you know, a great time or great fundraiser for the American Cancer Society does. And um, it helps many millions of people every year with, that are diagnosed with cancer. He's on his way to recovery and is considered to be in remission. Collins will attend Gustavus Adolphus in the fall, and his dreams don't stop there. I won't be playing football this year, obviously, but hoping to get back on the field in the future. And if anyone can accomplish that comeback feat, he can. In the center, I'm Eric Gullickson, News 12 Sports. The MSU men's basketball team has been noticeably rough on the rims at President Arena this winter. Additions of Jefferson Mason, Jermaine Davis, and Cameron Hodges, who all enjoy the art of the dunk, have brought electricity to the Maverick lineup. Center Travis Nelson is in his second season with MSU and says he enjoys throwing it down whenever he can. It's a pretty uh, amazing rush of adrenaline, you know. It's, it's a feeling you can't describe, and it's just fun and gets everybody going. The dunk has been a big part of the MSU men's basketball team's success this year. It gives the team energy, the fans some energy, and a change in the momentum each time it happens. When you do that, a lot of adrenaline gets rushing for not only you, but your teammates. And it, it kind of, uh, you know, makes the other team get down a little bit. It, it changes everything in the game, and it's, it's an important part of the game. And that, you know, that's what we, when we do that, that's when we usually go on our runs. When the Mavs are down, the other team's making a run, or they're looking for the knockout blow. The big time jam is soon to come. It's been key in helping the NSIC regular season champs to a record of 24 and 3. And head coach Matt Markendaler says he enjoys the attack mentality his team has this season. Honestly, I want him to go for it. I mean, if, if, you know, if you're going hard and strong every time in the basket, you're going more likely, if someone's there, you're going to get the call by the official. Um, you know, I don't like the showboating aspect of it, but I think that our guys, uh, as athletic as they are, it's their opportunity to shine. If they can keep putting on a little showtime with the energy on high and the momentum in their favor, this group of Mavericks will be a tough one for anyone to take down the rest of the year. In Mankato, Eric Gullickson. Russo Sports. And Eric's in now with sports. And Eric, there were lots of awards and honors tonight at MSU. Titles, awards, honors. Brady Wilson, Liz Trauger, and Brittany Henderson were named MSU's top athletes academically and as top athletes today. So congratulations go out to them. And the baseball team was looking for some awards too. Let's take a look. The MSU baseball team split with St. Cloud State on Saturday with both teams deadlocked and a tie for first place in the conference with Winona State. The Warriors dropped their first game today, and MSU topped the Huskies 5-0 in Game 1. 
What it set up was a decisive game two this afternoon. With a win, the Mavs would clinch the Northern Sun regular season title, and they were looking to do just that. With runners in scoring position, Zach Rolls ripping one down the left field line, bringing in Steve Helgett and Mike Eckert, and that makes it a 2-1 to -one lead for MSU. Later in the inning, Ben Kincaid is at the plate. He's lacing one to right. He gets past the outfielder in right field, and Rolls is pretty quick. He comes in to score from second base. Kincaid into second on the throw, and it's 3-1 to one, MSU in front. Bottom third, more Mavs. Matt Kuchenbecker at the dish. Danny Miller on second base. That one's through the right side. Miller will beat the throw into home, and that makes it 4-1. to one. Kuchenbecker would later score to make it 5-1. Then Pat Lenton takes over on the mound. Runners on the corners, and he's getting it done, striking out the batter there. He goes the entire way. Two runs on six hits with four Ks as the Mavs win. 7-2 the final. Here's what the NSIC champs had to say after the game. I think that's the character of our team. You know, we're willing to work hard and do what it takes to, to ultimately uh, have team success. And, uh, you know, guys have been making sacrifices all year long since the first day back in September. They've been working hard, and, and I truly believe we're not only the, the best baseball team in the conference, but the hardest working team. And I think that, that showed the day. Guys were working hard, uh, you know, on every ground ball hit, every fly ball. Um, you know, the passion was there. This is just step one, so uh, it feels good to get it done with. You know, a lot of hard work. It's been a long season. So, um, you know, this is kind of almost the, the toughest one because it's so long and grueling and uh, it's pretty satisfying. Nice to win the regular season title, especially uh, here on our home field against one of our rivals. So to win it outright feels good, but then still got work to do this upcoming weekend. It doesn't get any better, you know, playing St. Cloud, our rival. Been our rival for 10, 15 years, you know, and come out here and take three. I know that if we only got two, we went to, went to, because they had the tiebreaker. But th these were huge, you know, big confidence booster for the tournament too. Well, here's some nuggets for you about the conference champs. The last one the Mavs won. They've won a ton, but the last one was an NCC title in 2007. The Mavs won the NSIC tournament last year in 2009, but that doesn't count as a conference title. MSU ends the regular season at 36 and 12, 25 and 7 in conference play. The Mavs will be the top seed at the conference tournament May 5th through the 8th. That's this week at St. Cloud State. Well, the Minnesota Twins were in Cleveland again this afternoon as the two teams battled in the rubber match of the series at Jacobs Field, and the Twins had the bats going. Fans pouring in to see this one because the Indians thought they could win, but the former Indian was taking them yard. In the fifth inning, Jim Tomei solo shot his fifth, makes it 3-2 to two Twins. That's home run number 569, tying him for 11th place on the all-time list with Rafi Palmero. The next batter is Delman Young, and he's doing the same. A solo shot to left field. Off of David Huff, making it 4-2 to two back to back shots, giving the Twins the lead. Bottom fifth now, Liriano getting in some trouble, runners on the corners, Austin Kearns doubles to right, Lou Marson scores from third, Grady Sizemore thinks he can come all the way around, but Kadire's got a good arm, they get it into Odog, and Odog throws to the new catcher for the day, Wilson Ramos, who makes the tag. The fill-in for Joe Maurer also went four for five, and then Liriano took over. He had nine strikeouts in seven innings as he gets the out there. Great game for the Twins. They win eight to three. They improved to 16 and nine. Wilson Ramos, four for five, filling in for Joe Maurer. He is out with that bruised left heel. Pat Neshek was also put on the 15-day DL today, inflammation of his right middle finger. The Twins open a series with Detroit tomorrow night at Target Field. Well, the Minnesota Vikings wrapped up rookie minicamp today. Neiden Prairie team was hoping to find out if they had a diamond in the rough with their late round picks for the Vikes. The Vikes drafted Joe Webb in the sixth round, a quarterback who they hope to make a wide out out of. He talked about his willingness to do anything and everything to help the Purple win. Looking for to contribute any way I can, special teams, offense, wildcat quarterback, you know, it, um, I'm just I'm just here to you know, um, show my presence and increase my value. Right on his feet. Well, the Vikings also took a chance on defensive end Everson Griffin in round four. His knock was he didn't show up every game, but says he's found out he's got to show up every day now that it's his full-time job. You know, you know, everybody everybody don't get to play you know football in a, in a professional league. You know, and I'm just happy to be part of this organization. And you know, the word is number 97. You know, it means a lot to me. You know, it means a lot to my family. And, you know, and just now it's, it's business now. You just got to go out there and just play and just play like you know how and take the and take and take the teaching. Well, we'll see what happens with these two young picks over the next few months and into training camp, which is right here in Mankato, starting in late July. 